I did the math briefly and based on I might change the diet up. I'll, I'll make this all apparent in my video of this diet once I make it like the full day of eating. Mm -hmm. But based on the Keiko math, mm -hmm. if I'm eating 6,000 plus calories a day mm -hmm. at my current weight, mm -hmm. I forget the exact figures. I should be gaining if we do the what's always 3,500 calories up is a pound gained or down is a pound loss, right? I should be gaining. It was something like four to five pounds a week, I believe. Right. It might be less than that. I forget the exact figures. I've, I'll okay. put the math in the video, like sure. I said, but sure. I, I should be obese within months here's, based like, on the math. If, if nothing else, here's the problem with the Kaiko calculations. As a person out there in the world, any average person, even an intelligent person, your ability to measure how many so-called calories you're so-called consuming is close to zero for a number of reasons. Number one, because the labels on foodstuffs are allowed to be out by 20% either way, plus or minus. So there's a 40% range. So there's no way that you're going to track your calories by writing down everything that it says on the labels of everything you've eaten. Secondly, calories are a measurement of heat energy and nothing else. That's how they're defined. That's how they're measured. That's what they are. Nothing else. They are made manifest as photons, the force boson of the electromagnetic field. These are massless. Given that they're massless, our understanding of physics tells us that that means that they can not be brought to rest. They move at the speed C in every inertial frame of reference. That means you can't eat calories. It's impossible. What you're eating is mass in the form of carbon skeletons with hydrogens attached to them and oxygens, the odd nitrogen, maybe some other things as well, depending on what you're eating. That's got nothing to do with calories, nothing whatsoever. So calories cannot affect your weight, up or down. So uh, number one, you can't measure how many you're consuming unless you write down zero because those, those are the facts of physics. You can't consume any. Now, you also can't consume how many you're emitting, losing, unless you have several PhDs, a laboratory, and several other PhDs that work for you making all sorts of measurements for you. There's no way you're going to get anywhere close to how many you're so-called spending or using or emitting either. So mm -hmm. here's a sum with two parts. How many are going in and how many are going out? You can't get anywhere near accurately measuring either of those things. The whole idea is ridiculous, isn't it? That's probably the biggest paradigm shift since I saw your content. Mm. As you can probably imagine, like the people I work with and talk to in my audience, like this, you get to this point in the conversation and it's, I mean, like heads are just exploding because mm -hmm. n you never hear anything like this. I, I mean, I've, I've had comments and talked to people that, I mean, they say at least that they were, and they are engineers and they do science for a living mm -hmm. and they say the well, same thing. What they often will cite is uh, they say the law of conservation of energy. Correct. Okay. Well, let's cover that. Number one, okay. when someone says to you, oh, the first law of thermodynamics, though, here's what I say when someone says it to me. Fantastic. Quote it for me. Well, uh, Lame Norton would say that it, uh, mass is conserved, correct? Yeah. Lame Norton would say, oh, the first <laughs> law of thermodynamics indicates that mass is conserved. Okay, well, there's a couple of errors there, Lame. Number one, no, it doesn't. The first law of thermodynamics not only doesn't say mass is conserved, it actually doesn't mention mass at all. It's explicitly excluded from the first law of thermodynamics. Secondly, mass is not conserved. Lame Norton. By the way, neither is energy. That's false too. Red shift. Really? A red shift is what happens when they are measuring how fast other things in space are moving away from our position. And they say, well, that changes the frequency of the light and it shifts it towards the red. It's a Doppler effect, they say. Great. That means the law of conservation of energy is also false. Whoops. Oh dear. So the old, there's a concept too you hear a lot now, because some people, they don't even say calorie balance anymore. They say mm. energy balance. Sure. From what I gather now, you are talking about mass in, mass out. That's correct. That's okay. So how, because we were commonly told about the energy. Mm -hmm. Can you describe in more detail the mass in, mass out? I have seen that um, uh, Michael Eads, I think mm -hmm. he has a vid video talking about, he kind of goes over if you invert the calories per gram mm -hmm. and he goes over like fat ultimately weighs much more or less. It, I have a very rudimentary understanding mm -hmm. of it, but can you go into that more yes. so? Okay. Look at the end of the day, energy is a construct. It's an idea. It's the thing that we have to invoke to explain the phenomena that we observe. It cannot be directly measured. Why do I say that? Well, let's think about calories for an example. How do we get the calories that are so-called contained in a food substance? Well, we stick it inside a bomb calorimeter. 
which is a closed thermodynamic system, and we put a large electrical current through the food sample, we nuke it, basically, and it's vaporized instantly to H2O, CO2, and some ash. This releases photons, which fly away from that explosion, if you like, at the speed of light, and those photons hit the walls of the bomb calorimeter, which are usually made of metal, and it excites the molecules. Then the molecules, being excited, that's what heat is, by the way, transmit that excitement to a bath of water surrounding the bomb calorimeter of a given volume, and excite the molecules in the water, which makes them get hotter. And we measure the temperature of the water, and we go, well, that's how much energy there was in that food. But we haven't measured energy. We've measured the movement of molecules in a water bath, which is a physical thing involving mass, things that interact with the Higgs field. Photons do not interact with the Higgs field, ergo they have no mass and cannot be brought to rest. They do transmit energy from place to place by interacting with things that do interact with the Higgs field, while not interacting with that field themselves. Mm. So there are mathematical conversions between this form of energy, that form of energy, and the other form of energy. Potential energy? which is positional, where something is in a gravitational field, for example, or chemical energy, the kind that we get from food. That's about the position of different molecules with respect to one another and the swapping around of electrons, actually. That's what all these chemical interactions are, which either absorb or release heat. Movement energy, kinetic energy, radiant energy, etc. So we can mathematically interconvert and, and change different currencies of energy so that we can say this is equivalent to that. These, this many calories is equivalent to this, many, this amount of work, physical movement, in kilojoules. Yes, we can do that. The, trans, the, the mathematical sum is four point something, is the conversion rate. Well, that's exactly the same argument as taking a New Zealand $10 note, flying to the States, putting it on the counter in a shop for a bottle of water and saying, here's my money for a bottle of water. What's the shopkeeper going to say? We don't take that. That's not money here. We're in the States. You need US greenback dollars to buy things. The same thing is true of the human body. We have an energy currency that we are able to use to do work, and that's chemical energy, not heat energy. If we could live on heat energy, all we need to do is go and sit in the sun for right. long enough. We don't need food anymore. We can be breatharians now. Now, okay, I could take my $10 New Zealand to a bank in the States and say, can you change this into greenback dollars? And I'll say, yes, you get $6 and something for that on a good week, right? Yeah. But the bank can do that because they have the technology, the kit, the equipment to do that. The shopkeeper doesn't. The human body is a shopkeeper, not a bank. So to say it's equivalent, absolute nonsense, stupidity. I've seen some people talk about somebody commented this on one of my videos because like if I I've never dove into this at this level, obviously, but I'll kind of just tell my audience like calories are not the proper way to determine what we get from food. Just kind of in very basic terms. Sure. So, someone was mentioning you can essentially equate calories to ATP or something along those lines. So that's Same also argument. incorrect. Same yeah. argument. Yeah. Because we create ATP using chemical reactions. Mm -hmm. Not by absorbing heat. And these reactions are affected by a number of things, hormones being a major one. You can you go into some of the can you go into some of the th uh, some of the things that affect the so-called Keiko equation if we're going to just use that? What are all these factors that are going to impact that internally? All sorts of hormone levels and the levels relatively of all of those things. The same is true of your endocrine system, um, your body composition, genetics the environment in which you place those genes at any given time. It's a rich tapestry. There are hundreds of thousands, millions probably of degrees of freedom that affect these things. Whereas the amount of calories in a food sample, plus or minus 20% either way, is mm -hmm. a set value. Mm -hmm. It also forgets the thermic effect of food. They will often say that's accounted for. I think, I forget Absolute who they say. nonsense. If you can't even count how many calories oh. you're taking in, how can you adjust that for the thermic effect? Also, how do you know what the thermic effect is for you? today, under today's conditions. It's just nonsense. Something I notice is that all of the elements, whether it's, like you said, the thermic effect, hormones, different types of foods, maybe you can't digest a given food, mm. whatever, 
Mm. They will say, oh, but that just impacts the calories out, right? They kind of lump it all into the CO part. Okay. Which is, which you can't measure Mm -hmm. unless you are living yourself inside a closed thermodynamic system, which is measuring the heat that's being exuded by your body at all times, which again has nothing to do with the chemical Mm -hmm. energy that's going on. The heat energy that your body is releasing is actually the waste. That's the entropy or part of the entropy. So it still doesn't tell you how many calories, well, it does, it tells you how many calories are coming off your body, but that's nothing to do with how much energy you're spending. What would your response be then? Because you'll see, I, you know, comments are always very similar to this. They'll say, oh, but I counted calories, I got X result, mm-hmm. or oh, well, that, that totally disproves all of bodybuilding, because how could that work if mm-hmm. they all count calories, just in general, right? Because I mean, okay, Here's, theoretically, yeah. it obviously can, it can work for people, but that doesn't mean it's ironclad or you right. Know. Here's here's what here's how we make it work. Given all the inaccuracies, given all this inability to actually measure any of this stuff, what we have to do to get this to work is to tell someone to consume so many fewer calories than normal that we swamp all of this error so that we know mm-hmm. that we're definitely outside that range and we will get a predictable response. Typically, a trainer will say to someone, you need to reduce your calorie intake by 500 calories a day, ongoingly. Very very common, yeah. Okay. That is one of the dumbest things you can do. That will destroy your metabolism long term. That is not a good idea. Even to lose fat. What if I want to lose fat, though, Bart? Well, if you want to lose fat, what you should probably do is eat a species-appropriate, species-specific diet, ongoingly, to satiety. That will help to mold your body composition in the correct way. you, you You count nothing, correct? Nothing you, you at all. Just, yeah. When I feel hungry, I start eating. And eating means a species appropriate diet when I'm adherent, which is most of the time. But I'm not perfect. I never said I was. A species appropriate. Let's let's clear what, I, what that is. Muscle meat and not organs, plus associated fat of large ruminant animals, salt, water, plus or minus eggs if you're okay with eggs, plus or minus dairy if you're okay with that. Watch the milk, though. It's very high in sugar. Period. Maybe some seafood if you're, you know, a bit here and there. Maybe mm-hmm. some poultry here and there. 80% beef, muscle, mm-hmm. meat, and fat. Mm-hmm. Added butter if you like. Added salt and water. That's it, pretty much. That's what one should eat. That would place someone in the best likelihood of having their endocrine system, their hormonal system, and everything geared towards their body optimizing itself according to your genetic potential. Now, before you say, oh, yes, but my family's all fat, so my genes are fat, Nonsense. Not only are genes shared in families, also so is behavior. Do the right thing by your body and your body will do the right thing by you if you do the right thing by your body long enough. People say, how long does this take to come right though? And I say, well, how long does it take you to f*** off up? Years, usually. Mm, So it might take years to get it back. This is not an overnight Mm -hmm. fix, but it is a fix. And add some muscle mass if you're a bit flabby. Because mm-hmm. muscle is metabolically hugely active and therefore will increase your basal metabolic rate 24-7, 365. Mm-hmm. What would you say now in terms of calories? Because, I mean, is there is there a better way to... Because it's common, right, guys in this space, right? It's like, okay, I want to gain muscle, so I'll eat a bit more food. Like, mm-hmm. I'll commonly say, increase your estimated calories by 200 or so. This is like a baseline. Do you think calories can make sense in that context? Because there's... There's like no other way to discuss these things. I still you know what I mean? I still wouldn't do it no. myself. When I'm when I'm talking to a person or suggesting to a person what they should do nutritionally, here's what I say. With the caveat as to what is food and what isn't, as I've just outlined, eat from that list only. When mm-hmm. you feel hungry, start eating. When you get that message where you feel, oh, I'm kind of full now, put the fork down. Even if there's only two mouthfuls left on your plate, Put it in the fridge. When when you get that message to stop eating, listen. Mm -hmm. The only thing you ignore in terms of your instincts around food is any message that your body tells you that carbohydrate might be a good idea because it's not. So ignore that, but otherwise, listen, eat food and stop eating when you're full. You don't have to count anything. Do you see paintings of ancient humans on the walls of caves standing around with calculators entering shit into chronometer? No. Do you see pictures of fat cavemen? No. Are we done? Good.